Popa has seen many great number 10s over the years, from Zidane to Bergkamp, Maradona to Messi. But as the game evolves and tactics change, the traditional playmaker role seems to be disappearing. That is, until now. Martin Odegaard, the immense Norwegian talent, is being hailed as the last true number 10 in modern football. People are saying this because of one thing and one thing only. Mesut Ozil's retirement. Mesut Ozil, one of the most influential players of our generation, his retirement and the role he played was instrumental when he was in Arsenal and every team he played in his career. It's obvious why the comparisons are rising. They are both playmakers and have played for Arsenal. These similarities are truly astonishing. If we look at the top clubs in Europe and their squads, there are no traces of a player closely resembling the likes of a traditional number 10. The last few number 10s that we used to know was James Rodriguez, which is now nowhere to be found. Currently, he plays for Greece side Olympiacos. Another player that was considered a true number 10 was David Silva, who is now older and lastly Mesut Ozil, as I mentioned before. In the modern world today, every player wants a box-to-box -box midfielder that can do a little bit of attacking and defending at the same time. Players like Jude Bellingham and Federico Valverde are what a more modern midfielder looks like. It seems like the traditional number 10 isn't as prevalent as it was before. The outcome of this makes people think that Odegaard might be truly the last of his kind, the last dying breed of the number 10. And here's the surprising part. He was scouted by both Barcelona and Real Madrid before he even hit puberty. But why has he been compared to some of the greatest playmakers of all time? What makes his playing style so unique? And why did it take him so long to find his place among the world's elite clubs? There are two parts of the story. First, let's go back where it all started. Martin was born in a small town called Drayman, Norway in 1998. A year older than your boy Louise, he grew up playing in the local team Drummond where his dad was the coach. His dad remembers asking all the other kids how much time they were dedicated to the practice. And Martin was putting in double the hours, coming from a family of athletes and working twice as hard as anyone else. And it's no surprise, when he was 11, he was invited to join the Strong Get Academy. Martin Odegaard showed signs of his exceptional talent from a young age. It didn't take long for Odegaard to stand out from the crowd. His skills and technique were far beyond his years, and he quickly became the star player for his club. By the age of 13, he had caught the attention of scouts from some of Europe's top clubs, including Barcelona and Real Madrid. In 2014, at the age of just 15, Odegaard made his professional debut for Trump's Godset, becoming the youngest player ever to play in Norway's top division. He went on to make 23 appearances that season, scoring 5 goals and providing 7 assists. In that season alone, he caught the attention of other top clubs like Manchester City, Bayern Munich, and many, many more others. His father confirmed that there were offers from more than 30 clubs. Ajax thought they were close. Roma had a stab on it. Celtic was another one, under the management of Roni Dela, who had given Odegaard his debut from Strong Scott set. As for Liverpool, managed by Brendan Rodgers at the time, did push really hard for the youngster's signature. Odegaard and his father were Liverpool fans, and there were obvious attractions about moving to Anfield. As for Odegaard's admirers in Germany, Borussia Mönchengladbach optimistically made a pitch to convince him. Stuttgart arranged a visit of their own, and lastly, Bayern was inevitably one of the teams that were involved when he visited Germany. Bayern, in fact, was among the first clubs to give Odegaard the red carpet treatment while he was still 14. Odegaard spent four days training with the Bayern Academy but for reasons never fully explained flew back to Norway without receiving an offer. It's fair to say that these clubs were truly desperate for him. After a few months of offers and negotiations he had to make a decision. Odegaard's decision was hard but he wanted to get the experience he needed to make himself a better player and join one of the most prestigious clubs in football history. The following year, Odegaard signed for Real Madrid, one of the biggest clubs in world football. He was just 16 years old at the time and had yet to complete his high school education.
nation. It was a huge step for the young Norwegian, but he was determined to make the most of the opportunity. Odegaard's time at Real Madrid didn't quite go according to plan, however. He struggled to break into the first team and was sent out on loan several different clubs over the next few years. Despite this setback, he continued to work hard and develop his game, impressing wherever he went. At this point, everybody thought that Odegaard was finished. He couldn't cut it at Real Madrid, myself included, but if you really think about it, he was only still 19 at the time. It only felt like he dropped off because of the comparisons, but none of them was his fault. He was getting game time and building confidence, and he was about to show everyone the talent he had been working on over the years. The second part of this story comes with the decisive move that changed his whole career with the mighty Arsenal. In 2020, Odegaard joined Arsenal on loan for the remainder of the season. It seemed like a great trial for both Arsenal and Odegaard, as Arsenal needed a new attacking minded people on the team. It was a chance for him to prove himself in one of the most competitive leagues in the world, and he didn't disappoint. He quickly became a key player for the Gunners, showing off his incredible technique, vision, and passing ability. The loan spell was such a success that Arsenal decided to sign Odegaard on a permanent deal in 2021. Since then, he has become one of the brightest young talents in world football, with fans and pundits alike lauding his performances on the pitch. Currently, he is battling it out for a first place finish against rivals Manchester City. He and the rest of the players at Arsenal are having a hell of a campaign. There has never been any doubt about the Norwegian's talent, but now he is fulfilling his potential. Mikel Arteta deserves the world of credit as well for the job he has done with Odegaard over the past couple of years or so. It is pretty clear that his game has grown in leaps and bounds. This is where the story continues. The last number 10 has still yet to achieve anything. Will he be able to achieve the impossible with the Premier League at the end of the season? He could pave the way for future players to continue being traditional number 10s just like Ozil once was. He truly could be the revolutionary of bringing them back to life. Bringing the number 10 not only ensures that more creative players could show their talents on the pitch, but more dynamic playing styles could come as a result of these players. Only time will tell that they either completely die off or re-emerge in the future. Martin Odegaard's story is a testament to the power of hard work and perseverance. Despite facing setbacks and challenges along the way, he never gave up on his dream of becoming a top level footballer. And now, as one of the last true number 10s in the game, he is well on his way to achieving that dream. Maybe?